All right, so now let's refactor our application to use Reducer. Since there are gonna be multiple steps, of course, we're not gonna do that in one video, but let's just do a basic setup. And right out of the get-go, I can say that most likely this video is going to be the most difficult one. Because unfortunately, I'll have to throw multiple terms at you right out of the gate. Unfortunately, there's no other way. In order just to create that setup, I need to provide two values, and yes, they have funky names. So my apologies, and if something sounds weird, my best suggestion is just to rewatch the video a few times, and hopefully by doing so, you'll understand the stuff better. Now, eventually we'll remove this one, but since I don't want to have some massive errors on the screen, since I think it might get distracting, for now, I'll just leave this one over here. Again, eventually this is going to be gone. What I do want to do for now is just comment out this functionality because we'll move this one to a reducer, a function we're about to create. So it's not going to be sitting here anyway. And I don't want that functionality to run. So let's just comment this one out. So as the user clicks any of the buttons, nothing should happen. And that's exactly what I want. So in order to get started with use reducer, first we need to grab the hook, correct? So we go over here. Now, of course, we can do the auto import and all that, but why don't we change this around and just say use reducer again. All of this is coming from React. Now, when it comes to use state, what do we pass in? We pass in the default state, correct? Now, with use reducer, it's a little bit more complex. We need to pass in two things. We need to pass in a default state and we need to provide a reducer effectively a function that is going to manipulate the state. Like I said, right away, many funky terms. Now keep in mind that it's just a convention to call this reducer. You can call this banana pudding, it's totally fine. But yes, most likely you'll always see the reducer. So let's start working on that. I'm gonna go to use reducer. I invoke the hook and yes, eventually we'll set up the values that we're getting back. For now, let's just worry what we need to pass in. Like I said, two things, a reducer function and a default state. So first let's come up with that function. I'm gonna go with const and you simply wanna create a empty arrow function. That's all you need to do. The hardest part probably is going to be coming up with a name. That's why I'll stick with convention and I'll just say reducer, not a vegan food truck. So reducer here, and for now let's just try it with empty one. I'm not sure maybe we'll right away have to pass in the state, but let me just try with an empty one. So this is an empty function. That's our reducer. This is where we'll control essentially our entire state. So we need to pass this one first. So then we need to pass in the default state. Now, default state can be anything. However, in my case, it's just going to be an object with a people property, which is going to be equal to the data. So pretty much whatever we have over here. But Yes, normally you have multiple things in there. You can have, is the modal open? Have you fetched the data? Is it loading and all that kind of stuff? And while we were working on a project, you'll definitely see that. For now, let's just start very simply and create that default state. So I'm gonna go here with const and you know what? I think I'm just gonna move this one up because pretty much once we set up that default state, there's not gonna be much work in there. But reducer, yes, will do quite a few things in there. So let me just move this one up. Default state. So that's the second thing you'll always, always need to provide. And of course, keep in mind one thing. Just because initially you add people doesn't mean that you cannot add later, for example, is loading. So as your application grows, essentially you just keep adding these items in a default state. That's how it works. So don't worry that pretty much prior to setting up your whole application, you need to right away come up with a state. No, keep in mind, you can keep adding things. That's perfectly fine. And all of them eventually will be over here as our default state. So let's pass it. I'm gonna go with default state and we're pretty much done with this part. So now let's move on the other side of the equation over here. Remember with use state, what did we get back? A people 
and set people, right? So a state value and a function. It's very similar with user do so. However, we're getting back a state and we're getting back a dispatch. So the main idea is the same, but the implementation is a little bit different. So let's try this one out. I'm gonna go with const. Yes, it's still an array, but this time it's not just one state value. This is our entire state. So if I'll have 50 values in here, yep, it's gonna be represented here in the state. Now again, in my case, I only have people, but I wanna stress one more time, you can have a bunch of values and all of them will be represented here with this state. Now, since this is an object, how we can access things in our application? Well, state dot, state dot, state dot. Hopefully that is clear. Now, the second thing is the dispatch. So we're gonna go here with dispatch. Again, this is a naming convention. A Bobo is also a nice alternative. And yes, this function is updating the state but here's the biggest gotcha. Here's the biggest difference between use state and the use reducer. When we talk about dispatch, we'll have to do this somewhat funny uh, syntax where let me keep moving and show you that. So when it comes to dispatch, we'll need to do this. We'll basically go dispatch, we'll invoke it like so, and then we'll pass the type in. Now, all of that is coming up. I'm just showing you that Essentially, the idea is the same. Yes, we are updating the state. However, this is not happening directly. So remember with set people or any of the set functions in use state, we just invoke them and this immediately changed the value of people. That's not how it works with user reducer. So that's where that structure comes into play. You cannot just willy nilly come in here and start updating the state. No, what you'll do, you'll dispatch, you'll pass in the action, basically what you want to do. And then it's going to go through the reducer. And then whatever we get back here from the reducer, it's going to be our new state. So yes, multiple steps and multiple new terms. Like I said, this is probably going to be the hardest video because I just have to cover these things. Unfortunately, there's no way I can show you a use reducer setup without talking about them. That's not going to make sense. So let me try this. I might need to pass in state. I kind of want to leave it for later videos. But if I'll get some bugs, of course, we'll have to at least talk about it a little bit. So this is going to be our initial setup. Now we can bravely take this one out. So we won't need it anymore. That's it. We can remove it. And then remember, we have people now. Do we have a state value now? Well, not really, right? So what do we have? We have state and in there I have the people. So let's keep on moving. And you know what, I'll just log so you can see the state. But since again, I don't wanna have some unnecessary errors, I can tell you right away that in a state we have the people and now instead of accessing the people directly, we're grabbing the state. So here's the deal. As far as access, yes, we still do the good old state value and then since this is an object, we're grabbing some particular property, but the update is not gonna be like this. You're not gonna go, hey, um, let's update the people array in the state. Let's create new people and set state.people equal to that. No, that's not how it's gonna work. We'll have to use the dispatch. It's gonna go through the reducer and all that shebang. So let's keep on moving. And in here, I also have people and I just wanna add state. Again, let me see whether we're getting back the error. If we don't return state, we might. So let me save. And if everything is correct, then I will talk about these suckers in the next video. The state and action that we need to pass in. And nope, everything seems to be working. And check it out. So this is my state object. And this is my array, correct? So state object, I have people. And now everywhere in my application, I basically grab these values, whatever they are. Again, in our case, it's just the people, but there can be more things in there. So that's the general setup for user reducer. And in the following videos, of course, we'll start talking about how we can update this state because it's nice to have a default state, but obviously we want to implement some functionality.